Chris. It's literally the big button that says record, John. That's how you record. It's incredible. Um, so what's up, guys? I'm excited to be with you guys for 201. Um, this is week six. Um, so we'll be starting 301 next week. Um, so everybody type Cassie in the Zoom chat because Cassie's gonna be teaching 101 um next the next six weeks. So I'm super excited. Um, hopefully, Cassie, right? We're gonna get an RVP promotion during the time you're teaching 101, right? Um, you got two months to do it. You'll have two months that click over over that time period. So we'll make it happen. Um, but guys, tonight we're going to talk about filling the pipeline. Um, you've been here for at least 12 weeks. At least one point in time, I'd be willing to bet that you're like, Dan, where the heck are all my people going to come from, right? Um, and so guys, a little bit of this is going to sound like I stole it from Tuesday night's training because I did. Um, but the rest of it's going to be newer things. And we're just going to run through this stuff and I hope you guys take notes because it might sound like it's a little bit trivial. You're like, Dan, yes, I know I need names and numbers. I understand that. But like you taking notes is the best way for you to re-engage your brain, even in something that you think you know everything on. OK, um, so make sure we're writing stuff down, guys. Make sure we're paying attention. I also want to encourage you all kick your cameras on. I love seeing your beautiful faces. I know we got crap going on. It's all right. Um, Amber, if you're breastfeeding, you can go ahead and leave your camera off, though. That's all right. But everybody else, turn your cameras on. Uh, I want to see your beautiful faces. So, guys, dig your well before you're thirsty. I talked about this the other day. Guys, there's an awesome book. It's literally called Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty. I'm going to look up the title really quick. Um, it's about networking and prospecting and building a list and stuff like that. Um, let me find it really fast for you. I just finished listening to it the other day. Um, it's called, it's by Harvey McKay, M-A-C-K-A-Y. So H-A-R-V-E-Y, M-A-C-K-A-Y, dig your well before you're thirsty. That entire book is about how to prospect, why to prospect, all that kind of stuff. Um, and just how to network with people, right? You should definitely do that, right? Um, so the second thing, guys, is most people underestimate what it's going to take to win. I can't tell you how many, and some of you guys have been on these calls too with people, right? They're brand new and they come in and they're like, I'm going to be your boss. I'm going to break your records. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a million dollars. Blah, blah, blah. They say all these different things. And then they realize that it actually takes just an inkling of work and they quit um, or they disappear or they just slow way down. It happens all the time. It is what it is. That's just people. But guys, I'm, I'm here to encourage you that it's going to take more than you think it's going to take, but you're going to have people to fight alongside of you through the whole thing, through the process through the ups and downs, through the times you think you're running into a roadblock, you're going to have coaches and cross lines and teammates that are here to help you learn how to do this, right? They're here to help you walk through the process. And, and that's really guys where I want, I want you to understand, like tonight we're talking about building a list, which a lot of you guys are going to tell me, Dan, I've already built my list. I've called my list. You haven't, because if you did, if you've exhausted your list, there would be no one else on earth for anyone to talk to in Primerica. Nobody else in the country, at least I should say, right? And the reality is there's just so many people. And if you're hungry enough, you'll go make it happen. So most problems in Primerica are not skill problems. It's not any other problems other than the list. We don't have enough names and numbers on the list. So we're going to go, uh, I'm going to talk about a thousand persons name list. I'm going to talk about how to get the names, how to call well, You guys know how to qualify the names, but I'm going to go through all of this. And like I said, some of this is going to seem very trivial, but it's like all of these different things I'm going to tell you tonight. If I, if you all were doing all of these things, we would have thousands of people on the Zoom call. Just from the 12 people right now in this room. I'm just, just from the 12 people here right now. There, Think about it. If all 12 of us had 12 people, that's 144. Right. Just if you had 12, there's a whole nother Zoom room happening right now of training also. Right. If every single one of you guys built a hierarchy with 30, 40, 50 people getting on or even a base shop, not even a hierarchy yet, a base shop of 50 people getting on trainings. That should be your goal, by the way. But of 50 people getting on trainings, this would be stupid. There would be seven, eight, nine hundred people on this Zoom call right now. You understand that, right? So you, your number one goal should be 50 people on trainings. But it starts with your thousand person's name list. So when you're building the list, guys, you're going to start in your warm market. Everybody type my warm market in the Zoom chat. You're starting in your warm market. Okay, why? That is the people that know you the best. Generally, they want you to win. Generally, they encourage you. Generally, they like you, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be warm. It would be a lukewarm market, right? We're starting in our warm market, okay? Okay. Then who's after that? Literally everyone else, right? Lukewarm market, warm market, hot market, cold market, non-existent market. 
We're always out here creating markets, right? Everywhere you go, you should be creating and building markets. How do we do that, right? First off, you should translate the digital to paper. Most of you guys probably have over 500 names in your phone, if I had to guess, right? Names and numbers on your phone right now that you have not translated it from your phone to a piece of paper, right? And if you would do that, you would probably have a lot more contacts than you think. And if you would call those numbers, you would have a lot more recruits and a lot more premium than you do currently. Okay, so that's where we're starting. We're starting on Facebook, Instagram, your phone book, all that type of stuff, right? We're starting at all of those different places, right? And we're building through all of that, right? So that's the first place that we're starting. After that, we go to associations, right? We go to your work. Where do you work at currently? A lot of you guys have full-time jobs still or part-time jobs to help fund your Primerica business. That's awesome. But are you talking to everybody at your work, Jenna? Yes, Jenna is. And Jenna's doing a great job doing so. And like, Jenna, you're going to mute yourself really quick. Most of your clients so far have come from your job, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would, go that's ahead. like a quarter of them. Okay, so a quarter of them, that's a solid percentage. You can mute yourself back out because the echo. But the, the reason I'm telling you guys that is because Jenna is going places and talking to people that she has to be around for her job, right? And she's making that network there. She's building that market at her job. What about your church? This morning, I was at church. I opened up my email. I saw I got a pay. I got paid last night, like 77 bucks. Um and I was like, oh, cool. I got paid last night. Like that normally doesn't happen. And the guy was like, oh, what do you like? The guy next to me was like, what do you do? I said, financial planning, insurance, investment, stuff like that. He's like, oh, could you help me? I was like, yeah, for sure. I booked a freaking kitchen table right on the spot. Guys, there's people all around you, like in your church. It's not weird for you to talk to people about what you do for work at church, right? People talk about their jobs all the time. So you talk to people and you build relationships and you take cold market people to warm market people. And it's also crazy to me at church, what is the one thing they tell you to do every week, right after you sing, right before you sit down? Go meet somebody you've never met before and shake their hand. They're literally, it's like, hey, prospect them. Go prospect people, right? Now, don't you should not be going to church simply for prospecting, but but it is an environment that they're literally encouraging you to go meet new people. Like it's, it's actually, it's welcomed. It's encouraged, right? What about your sports, your kids' sports, your nephew's sports, right? Get it, get like in a beach volleyball league, right? Or an indoor volleyball league or a pickleball league. I don't care what you got to do. I was, when I was playing hockey, I, I recruited four or five people out of the hockey team. I did about $150,000 in investments through the hockey team. What about your other hobbies, your basket weaving course, right? Your, your recorder class that you take, the lessons that you take for your recorder, your electric violin class, John, like all of those places that you go to, you can meet people and you can get names and numbers. And then what? You put them on the freaking list, right? You get the names and numbers and you put them on the list. And then guess what? You call the list. Guys, the number one goal, you should write this down, is to add people to the list and take them off the list. That's it. Add people, take them off. Add people, take them off. You, If you had a list, of a thousand people and you actually call through your list like you should every day, right? We take it from 10 o'clock. This is what we're doing in Tampa, right? In the office, we're gonna actually start opening up the Zoom room tomorrow as well, the RVP Training Center Zoom room from 10 to 12. So you can get on there too and be a part of it, at least in some capacity. But if you're if you're making your list, watch this, ready? If you're making your list, Elian, and you're calling, you won't get to 200 before you don't have to be on your list anymore. I I promise you like you're just dialing your 25 30 code that's about all you're going to get in an hour an hour and a half 25 to 30 calls you're not going to get to two or three hundred before you've got enough activity going on that you're in somebody else's warm market because that's the goal of recruiting yes or no to recruit them get into their warm market train them on how to stay in a warm market and continue to multiply and duplicate yourself if you actually call the people that are on your list you won't need a list if you call, and this is the thing, like Cassie, you're really good at getting the list. And, and, and it, we just, all of us, myself included, we got to get better at calling the list, right? We're good at getting the list. We got to get better at calling. Me too. I'm not picking on you. Please don't take it that way. But like, if we can translate the no names and numbers into calls, into getting on appointments, 
Like you'll never have to work off your list again. Like prospecting and stuff would be helpful. Yes, but you'll never need to. Why? Because you recruit somebody, you get their list, you you work in their warm market, you build them a business and you're training them, right? And through there, you'll find a promotion exchange. All types of stuff will happen through that. But it all starts with your list. So I already said that. Why is it in there twice? I don't know why that's in there twice. So you got your five to stay alive. Okay, so you have five renewable sources of people. Okay, so you guys need five places. I've talked about all of this stuff. I told you I was going to say a bunch of things. I've told you guys a million times. So some of you are already sleeping, but but you're five to stay alive. You need five renewable sources of people to talk to. You need places to go that you can meet people. If like Jenna, your job, that's a great one to stay alive, right? It's a great one to stay alive. It cannot be the only source though, right? And it's not, but it can't be. So a lot of you guys have social media. Right. A lot of you guys use social media for your business. That's awesome. Um, like set the car wash too. And the car wash, yeah, the car wash, right? It's like that magic Panera that Andy always talks about. You got that magical car wash that just spits out clients to you. It's crazy. Um, but like Seth, I think you do a lot of prospecting at your job. You just talk to people about what they do there. That's awesome. But we need four other places, right? So we got social media, right? I don't care what your five are, but you need five. Right? You need a networking group, in my opinion, right? You need you should be going to some type of networking group. You've got a BNI, a chamber of commerce, a professional networking group. Guys, are you is just say yes or no in the Zoom chat. Are you familiar with what business networking international BNI? Are you familiar with what BNI is and does? All right, enough people said no that I'm going to tell you. So BNI is a place that business owners go to to network with each other and to pass referrals. The sole source of that group, Seth, is for other business owners to go and meet other business owners and pass business to one another. Not a bad idea, right? All of you have a chamber of commerce in the area that you live. Every single person, there's some type, it might not be called chamber, but you've got some type of chamber of commerce in your general vicinity of where you live. Figure out where they meet at and go. Yeah, absolutely. 100%, Seth. Yes, you can. You actually can't go using a different name. You have to use Primerica. Like, so you say you're a Primerica life insurance agent because you're not investment licensed yet. But yeah, absolutely. 1000%. Like when we moved to Tampa, I met, I went to Chamber of Commerce three times. I met four key people. Those four key people give me referrals every month. Every one of those people gives me a referral every month. I've been in the Chamber in like eight months. Why? Because I went there, I found the relationships I needed to make, I made them, I keep them, I nourish them, right? I, like I get coffee with them okay, like once every couple months, nothing crazy, random texts here and there, but I made the, now you should go more often than that if you're building, like if you're really trying to, to build and find clients, I don't have any problem recruiting and field training people. So for me, I don't need that place where they're sending me life insurance apps every five seconds. I just don't need it. Right. Why? Because I'm more focused on recruiting and training and building than I am on being in client services. But if you're like, Dan, I'm not making money right now. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not making as much money as I need to go to a chamber of commerce. It's like 25 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month usually. And you get to go and be around other business owners. There's a million different professional networking groups. There's like young sharks in the Tampa and, and, Orlando area, there's BNIs, there's my sales force, there's the one that Cassie you were in for a little while. There's a bunch. My point is get in one and go. John, I don't know what meetups is. Can you unmute yourself? What is meetups? Give me like a one sentence definition of what meetups is. Yeah. So meet, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So meetup is essentially, uh, it's an app that you can do for professional networking in different areas such as well like in the past i've done for programming developer uh and you can do business yeah uh, i don't meetup. i don't see any reason why not to do that but i wouldn't use that as your networking group does that make sense i would still find yeah. it, that could be one of your five to stay alive potentially um i don't think that's a bad idea I, there's, there's like park bench or something like that there's a bunch of things like that that you could use um and just find five guys here's the key you need to find five things. You need to find five things and you need to work them, right? Like you find five, you're going to have two or three that are your main ones. Like for me, my main ones is uh, Facebook, out and about prospecting, 
And then actually existing clients taking me to referrals and, and stuff like that. So those are my three that I have right now. But then outside of that, I've got our church and I've got the gym. Those are the, I, I work those, but I'm not like running around, getting everybody's name and number, calling them the next day saying, come join my business. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm naturally building those markets. But the other three, like Facebook, I'm just hammering Facebook like crazy. My current clients, I'm rolling through all my current clients, lap past recruits, everything right now. And I'm drumming up so much activity from that that I'm not going to need to be doing that in a couple of weeks because like this week alone, I I booked nine direct recruit appointments today by going through my list, right? It's, it's not, it doesn't take a whole lot of work when you have a specific goal that you need to meet, right? And a specific thing that you're trying to do. So here's the other thing, guys, like, and then I was, I, this, I said church already. I'm going to talk about this again. A um, couple of things. One, I, I think y'all should be going to a church. Like, I'm just going to say that, like, you need to be going somewhere that's going to nourish you spiritually. I think you should go to a certain type of church. I don't necessarily care that you go to it. Like my point is you need to be somewhere where you're getting poured into on a outside of business, outside of relationship where, where you're just being coached and taught and encouraged and poured positivity into. But while you're there, guess what you're going to find a whole crap ton of parents, married people with kids. They have pretty good values generally. They generally are in decent markets. They generally care about their finances. They generally care about doing the right thing. You're going to have an incredible market of people that if you would go and build relationships with, you'd be able to have a lot of people to talk to there. But more importantly than that, hopefully your life will get changed. But but you're going to have a ton of people that you're going to be able to network with and meet. They might not be the right person for you to work with, but they're going to know other people, right? Because married people with kids, no more married people with kids. It just, it is what it is. So go there and use it, right? Utilize the groups. Steaming people. What does that mean? It's salespeople, right? So when I go, when I go on a steam appointment, a steam appointment, I don't do these very often. I did one last for, uh, last Thursday and it was great. I got a bunch of referrals out of it. I don't do it very often. Seth, these are people usually that I'm afraid of recruiting or talking about products right off the get-go for whatever. They're usually chicken list type people, right? It's like, hey, I started a new business. I really want to show you what I'm doing. And, and I'm sure you're good. And I'm going to sit down with them and I'm going to, I'm going to talk to them about what we do. And then I'm going to say something along the lines of this, Luke, I'm, I'm sure you're good. I'm sure you're all set. I know you're doing great where you're at right now and you're super happy. They take care of you well. I'm not trying to recruit you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm looking for great contacts for my business that I started. Okay. These are the people that I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that are good at sales. Who do you know that's great at sales? They can sell anything. They're great talkers, right? Who do you know that's a good teacher? They're great at explaining things. Who's enthusiastic, ambitious, enthusiastic. They're always excited. They're good people, people, right? Who do you know that's um, ambitious? That's the person um, they're always, they got the nice car, the nice watch, right? This, they, they're the Instagram person that's ambitious. And then who's somebody that, you know, that's motivated. They're always talking about the next business. They're always talking about the next thing. Who's that person. And I'm trying to get names and numbers. And then you're going to tell them, you're going to want to go back and watch this again, but you're going to tell them, Hey, Cassie, I'm going to give these people a call. I'm going to tell them that you gave me their number. Okay. But I'm going to also tell them that the same thing I told you, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to have you join my team. I'm just looking for great people. Why? Because Cassie, the people that you know that are good people are going to know more good people, right? And I'm just trying to tell a lot of good people about what I'm doing right now. Does that make sense? And so you're going to, you're going to explain that to them. And what, guess what always happens? If they're the right type of person, they're going to ask you, what do you do? How do I get involved? Right? This, this guy that I met with the other day, he does real estate right now and his company has a non-compete. That's the only reason he's not joining our business. He makes like 800 grand a year right now as a realtor in Tampa. And he knows a ton of people. And he's like, look, like I would do it, but I can't, I can't walk away from 800 grand. It's just my, that's my main source of income for my family. I, I just can't risk that right now. It's like, Hey dude, I, I get it. And I told him, I was like, look, I'm like, who are people that you know, that are just high quality people in the area? He gave me a list of people. Not one person on that list makes less than a quarter million dollars a year. And so instantly one, one conversation can springboard you into an entirely different realm that you didn't even know existed. Right now, I'm not saying I didn't know that that existed, but, but you're going to start, these appointments will lead you 
to great people, right? This is, think about it like this, right? Like you guys know the story, Moby Dick, like he went out to hunt like one giant elephant or not elephant, whale, right? Not, not, not an elephant. We're not talking about the African continent, Moby Dick. We're talking about the Moby Dick of the sea. Um, so like we're, we're out here trying to, um, he's out here trying to hunt down one gigantic whale, right? Yeah, sea elephant, exactly. <laughs> Elliot put a sea elephant in the Zoom chat. Uh, but so, like, you got to look at the steam appointments as, like, you're hunting elephants, right? Like, you're out there trying to find the big ones that can lead you to other big ones, right? You're the, And 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 honestly, you're going to say, like, I'm going to do, I'll probably do a couple hundred thousand dollars in investments from this guy in the next couple of weeks also because he's got some old 401ks. His son just started a thing. He's got some money he wants to put aside. Like, so it's all steam appointments are all about elevating your network. You should write that down. Steam appointments are about elevating your network. You should go on two to three of those a week. I'm pushing, like, that makes me uncomfortable. I'm going to be honest with you. You should always on your steam appointments, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to really push some of you way out of your comfort zone right here. Maybe two of you will do this. You should be networking with people that are making double to triple what you're making or what you're, what you should be making, right? If you were really doing what you need to be doing, how much money you'd be making here at that level, you should triple that. And those are the people you should start meeting with because they're going to take you to better people there. They know people that you don't currently know. They have access to rooms. They could literally snap their finger, get you into a room that you couldn't, you'd have to wait at the door for forever. Right. And it's because you build a relationship and you're just trying to build yourself into better networks. That's all. And I'm not trying to be mean by saying like your income and whatever. It's just that is the game. Like that's the that's the business game. Right. You're going to stay at one spot forever or you're going to elevate yourself out of where you are to the next level. And at, at that next level, Angie, somebody's going to have one sentence that's going to change your life forever. They're going to have one connection that's going to lead you to somebody that's good. Most of your business is going to come from that. If you look at Pruck's whole business, this is crazy. If you look at Pruck's whole business, one guy introduced him to John Cooper, Emmanuel Earls, and one other guy that's pretty big. And I forget who it was, um, but he, Ian knew Nate Braley and Ian prospected Josh Christian. But outside of those two people, the, the rest of his RVPs, Elian, came from one guy one dude so what happened angie was he he went out and you should listen to seven months to rvp if someone can grab that and put it in the in the zoom chat that will encourage you because that story is about exactly what we're talking about doing just working the list for seven months hard but but he one guy took him to to john cooper john cooper's replacement was jerome cooper and a few other people cassie you know jerome Right. So John's replacement was Jerome and three other people. All of them became RVPs. All of those people's replacements became RVPs. So Pruck got like nine or 10 first gen RVPs from one guy. Like, understand how crazy that that is, guys. You got to just understand that you never know. You never know who that one introduction is going to take you to. I'm spending a lot of time on this slide because I believe that this is probably the most scary slide but it's also probably the most important slide because this slide is going to introduce you to hundreds of thousands of dollars if not millions of dollars that you would not otherwise have if you didn't step out and go get uncomfortable and meet with realtors meet with mortgage loan officers meet with distribution company owners like meet with people that own here, here's a here's a good one for you meet with people that own like the um you know the trucks that drive around and drop stuff off at restaurants like go meet the drivers and ask to meet their boss and start networking up with people why because the owners of those companies guess what they're doing all day they're talking to the owners of restaurants and stores and they're getting their foot in the door there and they already have a foot in the door to business owners guess what all business owners have that you don't have really that much of in primerica overhead payroll expenses for your business dude you go talk to you you start making three four five hundred grand a year and you go talk to a business owner and show them your statements and your 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 p l sheets for your business they're like what is happening like this doesn't even make sense like how do you you have you make four hundred thousand dollars you don't ever work and 
you have like Carlos was talking about it, like his accountant, like didn't he couldn't fathom what was happening. Makes 600 grand a year, does almost no sales himself. And in that, it's crazy because in that process, Luke, he's got very, he has very little payroll, two office rents, one here, one in Mount Jersey. But outside of that, like, that's it. Like he has like four or five grand in overhead every month and makes 60K a month. That's nuts. What other business? Where where else can you do that? Like short of like e-commerce stuff, right? It's crazy. Client referrals. Guys, I'm telling you right now, like you got to get good at getting referrals, right? Dick Walker has just been absolutely hammering everybody with this at the office. He's like, you got to get good at getting referrals. You close a sale, you should have two or three referrals on that sale. Right. You did a if you do a good job with them, if they are doing business with you, why wouldn't they want other people to do business with you? They trust you enough for their money. They should trust you enough for other people's money. If they're not giving you a referral, I would be afraid of a chargeback. Why? Because if they're not going to tell their grandma or their mom or their brother that they just saved 200 bucks a month and they set themselves up for retirement, why? would they keep what they set up with you if they wouldn't tell somebody else about it if they saw value in it? You saw a good movie a couple of weeks ago and you told somebody about it, right? Like it, it, you go, you went to a good restaurant, you put it all over your Facebook. You showed somebody how to retire a millionaire in 10 years less time. They're going to be pretty happy with that. You got to get the referral, but you got to set the precedence in the beginning. Guys, and then what you need to do with every referral that you have, you should have a list of referrals that tells you where that referral came from. Okay, that referral, okay, so Cassie was a referral from Luke on a field training appointment um, back in 2021, great. And I just know where it came from. So, hey, Cassie, Luke gave me your number a couple of years ago. We've been, you know, I've been following up with you, just been having a hard time connecting with you. Um, he saw a lot of value in what we did. I wanted to make, I wanted to meet with you and show you what we're doing, right? You That way you can say like, hey, look, I've been calling you. They you literally call these people every three months. Hey, your name came across. I can't tell you how many times I get a call from this one dude. He's a financial advisor. He still freaking calls me after I tried to recruit him. He still tries to get me to go put my money with him. Like you're an idiot. But anyway, like he follows up with me. Why? Because I was a referral to him. He, because it's just a mat. He mastered the thousand person. He's not even in Primerica, but he mastered the thousand person's name list. Right. Out and about prospecting. Talk to them and ask them questions about them. What is everybody's favorite thing to talk about? Put in the Zoom chat. Themselves, themselves or their kids, right? So you get them to talk about themselves. What do you do for work? What do you love about it? Oh, I'm sure you. I'm sure it took you a little bit of time to get really good at it, but, but like how long did it take you to get good at it? What did it take to get good at it? What do you like about it? What do you enjoy about it? Like all different questions about what would you change about it? All that kind of stuff, right? And and you you push in on them and you get them to understand or you get them to see that you actually care about them and be genuine when you're asking, right? Don't be like this and be like, oh yeah, Luke, like what do you, oh, that's cool. Like what about your kids? Like that's ridiculous. Like put your phone in your freaking pocket, have a conversation with them, be present, get to know their kids, use their kids' names later, right? When you're talking to them, talk about their kids by name. Like, oh, so how long has Sally been playing softball? That's awesome, right? You just start talking to them and you build a relationship with them. Eventually, everyone's going to ask you, what do you do, right? If they're courteous, they're going to ask you, what do you do, right? And so if you're prospecting them to recruit them, you're going to ask some of these questions, right? Uh, I'm going to skip forward really quick just to check a couple of things. Okay, yeah, perfect. So what do you what do you love about what you do? What would it take for you to double your income? These are a couple, I don't care how you get the name and number, just that you do. So whichever one of these sounds better for you, what do you love about what you do? How long did it take you to get good at it? What would it take for you to double your income currently? And when they ask you what you do, you're going to say one of these two things, right? If you're trying to prospect them as a client, well, I help people make and save money. Thanks for asking. You know, and, and we'll get to what to say next. And if you're, uh, if they ask you what you do, Hey, I'm, I'm in charge of hiring an expansion for a financial business. We're always looking for sharp people. Or it's not this, you could say that if you want to, I don't do that anymore, but you can. Um, and then you're going to switch the conversation back to them. Right? So, Hey Luke, what do you love about what you do? I love this, blah, blah, blah. And I love clipping grass. I love the smell of the lawns. I love waking up at 5am and work until 9pm. It's the best. 
Awesome. Cool. And then he's going to say, well, what do you do? Oh, well, I help people make and save money. Um, you know, it's awesome. I, I enjoy that. But hey, how long have you been working here for? Well, I've been working there for a while. And you just always take it back to them, right? What's your favorite? Do you like pushing the lawns or the lawnmower? Or do you like riding the lawnmower? Are you like weed whacking? Or are you a, are you a leaf blower guy? Like what's your, what's your preference? I'm being ridiculous. I understand that. But you need to be a, you, it's skill with people. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. How many of you guys have been reading that book? Like I told you to. It's, it's your skill with people. Angie's been reading the book. No wonder you got 9 billion recruits last month, right? Like it's just, it just happens. So switch the combo back to them at the end of the conversation. Read it every day for a month, Cassie. It's, it's a short little guy. Read it or listen to it every day or every other day for a month. Trust me, it'll, it'll change the way fundamentally that you talk to people. Right. I, I promise. So at the end of the conversation, Hey, let me shoot you a text, Angie. So you have my number. What do you have to get from them to text them? Their phone number. It's rocket science, right? It's the craziest thing ever. You get their number, you text it to them, you save it, and you have them save your number. And then guess what you do later that day or tomorrow? You call them and you set the appointment. Guys, and then again, what's this here? Translate digital, whatever. I keep this. This was my template slide if you didn't figure it out when I was remaking all these slides with our logo on it. So anyway, um, constantly be adding to your list, guys. Your goal, like if you, how many, hit the raise hand button if you have a thousand person's name list with a thousand people on it right now. Also hit the raise hand button if you're making as much income as you'd like to be making right now. Very strange correlation between those two numbers. Okay. We have, I just hit a thousand people on my list last week. I, like, I really want to challenge you guys every day, take 15 minutes or 10 minutes right before bed or right, like, shoot, do it while you're on the toilet. Let's just be honest, right? Take your book with you into the bathroom, John, and write out all the names and numbers you can think of for the three minutes that you're sitting on the toilet. Right. Do it right before you take a shower. Hey, I can't get in the shower. until I write down 15 names and numbers. Who is those names? Like, and just take it with you. Every time you see your book, go put five names in it and then qualify the names and get to a thousand, get to a thousand. Like your income depends on it. And then here's the kicker. Call the names, call the phone numbers, speak words to them, leave messages, send them text messages. Like you don't even have to call them. If you like, if you've already talked to them recently, you don't have to call them just to sell them crap. Are you going to be like, Seth, I just want to give you a call. See how you're doing. How's everything going? Oh, it's going good. Awesome. Hey, man, if you ever need anything, let me know. I just want to give you a call. Make sure things are good. That's And hang up. It does not need to be a, you don't, Ellie, and this is for you, ready? You don't need to spend 48 hours on the phone with somebody for them to know that you love them, okay? You can spend five minutes or three minutes on the phone with somebody and get just as much, if not maybe even more across in that short period of time than you can by listening to each other chop carrots, right? Like, like let's just let's just be honest. We're just sitting there with dead space, right? We're just on the phone for 40, 45 minutes. Ellie, and I love you, bro. But but like your phone calls sometimes, I'm like, dude, you've been on the phone for nine hours with the same person. But listen, like when you're making your calls, like you'll see it tomorrow. Those of you that come into the office or get on the Zoom um, at 10 o'clock, um, you'll see it. Like it doesn't, it's not long calls. It's very short time frames. It's like I'm on the phone for three, four minutes max. Like, unless somebody's just drilling me with questions. And even then, Angie, I'm like, thanks. It's a great question. Like, what's better for you? Weekends? I'm trying to set the appointment and get off the phone. Why? Because I can't give them a presentation over the phone. Right now, I did close a life app the other day over the phone, but that's besides the point. That's not normal. He literally told me he wanted to buy life insurance right there. So I did it, but that's not normally going to happen. But that happens when you're playing in traffic and when you're calling people, when you're making your calls, crazy things will happen to you. Guys, that happened to me because I made the calls. That was even somebody, Angie, to be completely honest, I looked at my phone. I was like, I don't want to call this guy. And I called him and he, it was a thousand dollar app. It was crazy. It was nuts. But anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. I know you've seen stuff like that. I, I know you've seen this before, but I hope that you guys take this very seriously. Th those of you that are part-time or even those of you that are full-time right now, especially, but those of you that are part-time and planning on being full-time soon, 
you got to get your list to a thousand and you got to start hitting the phones and calling that list and setting up your appointments because that will let you be optional with your job very quick, very fast. If you actually call the people. So anyway, we're going to go back to the main room real quick. I'll close out the meeting guys. Thank you so much for